Today we are going to create this cool green screen LCD effect. This is going to be short and sweet. First thing we need is to pixelate it. For this we can use the live pixelate filter, which I will add from the layers panel. Choose the pixelation level you want. I'll go for 6. Remember this number as we will need it later in a minute. To create the old school LCD effect we need to separate the pixels. There are a couple of ways of doing this. Later in the video I'll show you how you can achieve that with pattern layers. But for now I'm going to use the hatch fill option. So I'm going to add a rectangle to fill the canvas. The color is not so important, but I'll stick to mid gray. To enable the hatch fill we can select the gradient tool. With the gradient tool selected we can now change the fill type to hatch. In my case I have a nice grid now as Affinity remembered the last hatch I used. In your situation this might not be the case, so let's start over by removing the existing lines in the hatch pattern. First let's set the width of the lines, which is going to be 1 pixel. Next we can go to the hatch settings and add the lines to get our grid. For the first line we just need to set the spacing, which with my example will be 6 pixels, which was the value I used in my pixelate filter. So make sure you use the same value here. We now have the vertical lines, and actually this can be used in a VHS look effect, but for the LCD effect we are going for, we also need horizontal lines. So let's add another line and set the rotation to 90 degrees to get the horizontal lines and the spacing to 6 pixels. Awesome, we now have our grid. We will be using the lines in the grid to achieve that spacing between the pixelated parts in the image. Before doing that let's make sure that the grid perfectly aligns with the pixelated image, which can be tricky, but you can lower the opacity or even change the color if you want to help out with the alignment. Once the hatch is aligned we can now drag and drop this to the pixelated image icon so that the hatch pattern becomes a mask. If we look closely we can see that the pixelated areas are now separated by an empty space. Let's add a grey fill layer from the pixel menu and move this to the bottom of the layer stack, so this will act as our background fill. To get that LCD green effect we need a gradient adjustment, which can be added from the layers panel. In my case I already have a preset, so I'll use the adjustments panel and select my preset. It's just a gradient which goes from blank to light greyish green. And our effect is basically done. Now for some extra spice you have been waiting for. Let's add a Gaussian blur filter and make sure it will be above the pixelated image layer. For the blur radius I'll go with something like 0.6 pixels. The magic happens when we set the blend mode of this blur layer to color burn, which in my opinion works very well with this image. If you want more detailed color you can lower the opacity of the blur layer. For further customization we can open up the gradient adjustment and add additional points and move them around to fine tune the effect. If you want to lower the number of green tints you can also add a posterize filter below the gradient map and set the number of colors you want. Or you can use the posterize layer in a different blend mode to give different looks. I'll go with the screen blend mode to brighten up the green pixels. As a final effect we can add some distortion to the image to get that old school LCD screen feeling by adding a glitch filter. Make sure the glitch filter is in between the mask and the pixelate filter. Select the glitch effect you like and you're done. The cool part of this workflow is that it is very easy to adjust the pixel size, as we totally work non-destructively. I'll quickly remove the glitch and the posterize layers in order to keep things clean. Let's suppose we want bigger pixels, no problem. Open up the pixelate filter and increase to your desired value. I'll go for 20. We now just need to update the hatch settings we used as a mask. For both of the lines we can set the spacing to the value we used in the pixelate filter, which in my case was 20. The alignment will be off, so let me quickly fix that too. With bigger pixelation I also want a bigger gap between the pixels, which I can easily change by setting the hatch line thickness to 2 pixels. Awesome. 
If you really want to go old school, you can add a threshold adjustment so you get a one bit color screen. And by adjusting the threshold value, you can determine how the rendering to one bit would look like. With large pixel size, this will be pretty unrecognizable, but change the blend mode of the threshold to overlay to get a bit of more green tints in the image. Pretty cool. I promised you how to achieve the same effect using pattern layers. Using pattern layers has a bit more flexibility as you have more control over the mask. So let's start from scratch with our image. Just as before, we need to have the pixelation. This time I'll go for a value of 8. From the pixel menu, we can now add the pattern layer by using the new pattern layer menu. For the dimensions, we need to use the same value as we used for the pixelation, which in my case was 8. Let's now zoom in to the newly created pattern base. Before making any changes, I'll reposition it so it perfectly matches with the pixelation. Now with a black hard one pixel brush, I'll paint the color. Then use the flood fill tool with mid gray to fill inside the border. The reason why I'm using black and gray is because we can now use one of the overlay blend modes. Mid gray has no effect here, but the blacks will stay black, effectively creating a black gap between the pixels. As mentioned, the advantage of this method is the flexibility of the mask effect. I can for example paint in light and dark areas in the pattern layer to get more shine or a 3D effect. If you decide to change your pixelation size, this is still possible. After you make your changes in the pixelation filter, you can now go to the pattern layer, set its size based on the pixelation side and then reposition it. The cool part using the overlay blend mode as a mask is that we also get a very nice effect when we disable the green gradient. So this creates a more colored LCD effect. The disadvantage is that we have no control over the gap color. It will always be black or dark tinted. As you can see, turning off the bottom gray fill has no effect. One way to solve this is going to the pattern layer and then erasing the black border with the erase brush so the gaps in the grid will be transparent. If we now move this pattern as a clipping mask to the pixelated image, the transparent areas will be removed from the image and the background gray color will be shown again. Let me turn off the gray fill below so you have a better understanding how the image has been masked now. Even though this works quite well, I think there is a much easier way. Let me undo the last step so that we revert back to the grid with the black borders. What we can do is just move it as a clipping mask to the image and then open up the blend options. From the blend options, adjust the source layer blend range so that we exclude the blacks effectively making the blacks transparent. So in other words, instead of manually erasing the blacks, we use the blend range to achieve that. If I again hide the bottom gray fill layer, notice how the end result is basically the same as before. And this wraps our video. I hope you found this video interesting and learned something new along the way. Hit the like and subscribe buttons before you leave and see you in the next video.